What is good? We're back. We got a full tripod again. Tripod. Just hitting you with guest after guest. We had Angelo last week. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. Got my man Jay Wayne here, and we got a special guest, Troy at T King Mode. What's good, baby? How you doing? Man, I'm doing great, y'all. I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm excited to chop it up with you. We have a lot to talk about, so I'm ready to get into it. Yeah, we're going to, with the draft kind of approaching here, we've done so much rookie talk. You know, we're going to really jump back into that as soon as the draft's over. But, you know, we haven't talked a whole lot of uh, off-season news, kind of free agency trade stuff. So we're going to jump into that now. I need a rookie break. With our guy, True. Yeah, I mean, with our guy, Troy, and I definitely have a little rookie fatigue. I'll be reinvigorated once we get all these landing spots and we can stop guessing about draft capital. Right. So, Troy, man, how's it going, man? How, how you been? Man, I've been great, man. I say, like, you know, it's been it's been the craziest offseason I can remember with all the movement, especially the quarterback movement, the giant contracts everybody's getting, drama, organizations. It's just, it's so much. Again, it, it gives us something to talk about. For like, sure. As a fan, it's like, again, there's... This season is going to be, I feel like, like no other. It's like, it's completely different from last season. So I'm 100%. really excited to get into it, especially the draft is going to answer a lot of questions, hopefully, for us in terms of needs that a lot of teams need. So, yeah, man, it's been it's been exciting. It's been a lot, but it's been, again, gives us something to talk about. Yeah, the, the NFL is, is certainly undefeated, and they figured out a way to just dominate the sports calendar year-round. Doesn't even matter. March Madness, we don't care. Mm. Like, we're <laughs> you know, we're good. Uh, before we get rolling here, where can we find your uh, your stuff, Troy? Of course, you could find me at T King Mode on Twitter. I work with Yahoo as well as football guys. So y'all can check me out at T King Mode on Twitter. You can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I don't really do fancy football stuff, but you can follow me there if you want to. But tw- Twitter's my home base. So if you want to find me, follow me on Twitter. Great Twitter follow. Always some some fun, a fun follow. Uh, I'm always just seeing you pop up all the time, man. And then great, great in season article you're doing with the with with uh, Yahoo, you know, takeaways each week. So be sure to follow him and, and, and stay up to date with all the latest stuff. Um, so really good follow. Appreciate you coming on. Let's get into the show. I'm about to hit up that Instagram. What do we got on Instagram? Yeah. Dogs and food or what do we got over Dogs here? Dogs and food. Nah, it's just jokes, man. Okay, okay. Jokes are right. even better. Jokes. Yeah. Like jokes and like memes and stuff. You know, I'll just talk about whatever I want to. It'll be yeah. football. It'll be just, it's, it's whatever. I feel like it's more just me being me on Instagram. Yeah. You know, All right. Twitter Twitter's me being me, but more like football. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Focused, yeah. I yeah. feel you. All right, well, let's get the ball rolling here with something. I want to start off with something that was tr- uh, true to your heart. We, we did a little Dolphins talk after the Tyreek trade, obviously. Um, but really, we've kind of talked about it here on this show for a while. And w- why does everybody hate Tua, man? Like, I, like, I can't quite figure it out. It, it seems kind of odd that people were so quick to be out on him. I don't really get it. Maybe I know you're a Dolphins guy, fins up. Uh, so, you know, we, we wanted to com- come to you, come to the source on, on maybe to get a better insight on why everybody hates Tua. I think people hate Tua because of his, I think people's expectations so many years ago, right? Obviously, everyone remembers Tank for Tua, right? He's supposed to be no- – Number one overall, he has the hip injury, and he slides to five. We get him, and you know, and I, a lot of it has to do with like the jokes, all right? You know, when Brian Flores pulled him in the fourth quarter for Ryan Fitzpatrick, right? Like ever since then, I feel like that's really where like the jokes and the hate started coming. Oh, he can't even finish the whole game, kind of thing. So yeah. that hurt him. And also, the thing with Tua, right, is that he it's it's consistency problems, but it's not all his fault. I mean, granted, if anyone could tell you this like the offensive line did him no favors the offensive play calling like last year we had like the co-offensive coordinator thing it was really weird i don't know why the dolphins did it but i think that's played a part but yeah our offensive line was horrible so he had to make quick decisions they didn't protect him but Tua. also the problem with Tua is that for the most part he looks like a very competent starting NFL quarterback, but he makes really bad decisions at the worst times. And those plays are the ones that people remember and they make fun of. And also the the offense is 
offenses in the past years have been very designed to kind of like dink and dunk, right? Mm -hmm. They make fun of him. Oh, he never throws the ball deep or he doesn't have a big arm, which he doesn't have the biggest arm in the world, but it's good enough to throw deep. He just wasn't asked to do it that much. And also the line didn't give him enough time in order to throw deep. So you had to design plays in order, you know, to make sure they get the ball out quick. Right. right. So that was, that's the way. And again, it was a, there's a problem with the offense in general to a, Again, Tua could get some credit, but he also gets some blame, right? He's not blameless in this, but I just think it's expectations. He doesn't, he's not a Patrick Mahomes. He's not a Josh Allen. And I think that's what it is, right? I almost feel like nowadays, if you're not one of those elite guys, you suck. You right. know, it's like, no, oh, like 100%. <laughs> right. So I think yeah. that those are reasons why I think people just don't like Tua. That's a great point. And another thing to bring up, I just saw like a tweet about the cap situation that Miami has been in for the last few years where they're dead cap. <laughs> They've been paying players not even on their team. You know, it's hard to build around a guy and have a complete team to help the narrative of your quarterback being good when you're paying a ton of dead money to all these players that, you know, that from the Adam Gase era. Uh, but you mentioned Tua, you know, not being Patrick Mahomes, super accurate on that deep ball. I think he was like first in deep ball accuracy, which was, yeah. not a ton of attempts, yards, yeah. but, you know, also like almost last in, in or, or first in time to throw, which or, or had the least amount of time to throw, which part of that is the dink and dunk that you mentioned, but right. also the offensive line forcing them to have to get it out. So, yeah, a lot of things backed up against Tua, but I mean, he's got some life, right? Like he, he this, it's looking up, right? Things are looking up. And obviously, everyone knows about the you know Tyreek Hill trade, and we even got like Cedric Wilson. Yeah, Don't sleep on Cedric Wilson. I love like, Cedric Wilson. I mean, he, and here's the thing: like the offense now is going to be designed. Like I wouldn't say it's going to be. It's going to be more like there's going to be a lot of short passes still. But what it is is like the offense is going to be designed. All he has to do is get the ball to his playmakers right. and let them do the rest, right? Yeah. And that's what an offense is going to be designed. I feel like two was going to thrive in the McDaniel system. Right? You have nothing but yak monsters, exactly. and, and this is a system that they're going to set him them up with the, the best chance to succeed in that situation. And, and two, it just needs to be accurate within twenty yards, and I think you're good. Exactly. As long as he pretty much Tua just doesn't, as long as he doesn't lose the game, I feel like Tua isn't going to be asked to. Do, it's going to. He's going to ask Tua to do just certain things, and not he doesn't have to be again. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, they don't—they're not going to ask him to be a superstar. Just do your job, and our weapons are going to do the rest. And again, the backfield too—we talk about the receivers, but Raheem Mostert, Chase Edmonds—they're also. As we get the run game established, it's only going to help the receivers. And I think that the run game is also a huge factor. The past two years, the run game has been very inconsistent. So when you don't have a run game. And you have a bad offensive line. It's it, you're right. asking for a lot from your quarterback. From your quarterback who really it's kind just, of didn't have a rookie year and exactly. kind of missed a lot of time. Of his, he shouldn't have even played <laughs> exactly. his rookie year. Like they were talking about, he should probably sit the whole year with that hip injury. Yeah. But they they forced him in there and exactly to to a tug of Iloa or Jalen Hurts superflex. <sighs> If I'm a super flex league, I'll be honest. I'm going Jalen Hurts. Okay. Yeah, like, agreed. I'm going Jalen Hurts because, again, he is the upside of the rushing, right? Like, right. too, like he he might run sometimes, but again, elite rush, like the Konami quarterbacks, you know, look, mm -hmm. it's just a game changer, right? And Hurts was a QB1, again, like more weeks than not, right? Yeah. Like high end QB1 majority of the time. I love Tua, but I got to go Hurts. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're both kind of on the, on, Almost a one-year deal, too, and right. Hurts both that feel are. like they're kind of just in one-year scenario. So I think those are always, always solid uh, comparison there. Because, but but I think you're 100 percent right. You gotta you gotta you gotta uh, side with the Jalen Hurts side. I think that's what we decided. Okay. Last time. We so did then this. Malik Willis will be an easy one then to or Malik. Basically, the one-one in Superflex. Again, one, it, it's, it's got to be Malik, right? And obviously, even you know, regardless of landing spot, I'm assuming that wherever he's drafted, he's going to be starting in the near future. We might get the Trey Lance treatment. Who knows? Because Malik, he's he's not like a, you know, he, I don't think he's like a necessarily a day one starter. Right? I think he's still a little bit raw, right? Like sure. Trey Lance was a little bit raw. He went to a scenario where he could sit a year. I mean, we'll see. Same, same, same system. Exactly. So re regardless, you know, Look, Malik, I'm going to take Malik over to, again, he's going to be, at least I know Malik's going to have more than just one year. You and know? sustained so, value, yeah. right, regardless of what exactly. happens. It's going to sustain it th through one year where Tua, it could be up in the air. What, one last exactly. one, Fields. Fields or Tua? 
fields because of the you, same you thing. You gave him all the running up. Kirk Cousins or Tua? Oh, come on. Oof. This is a little tougher. I would say – I think the problem – oh, man, this is a tough one. Let me get Tua. <laughs> wow, but Kirk, Kirk's such a – Solid super flex he's quarterback. Always underrated. Yeah, Kirk is, Kirk is always underrated. I feel like him and Derek Carr are always super underrated. Hundred percent. I would say that I'm saying Tua at this very moment has more upside at the moment. It's Tua slightly. It's well, you, Tua slightly. I, I think that you gain the advantage of that. Everyone does hate Tua right now, but we maybe they also hate haven't, Kirk though. Yeah, but we haven't. We've seen enough Kirk to know where we think the upside is, whereas at yeah. least there's a little bit unknown with Tua what the upside exactly. could be. And his value, I feel his perceived value right now with the addition. And yeah, Tua's dynasty value has skyrocketed. Not skyrocketed, but it's definitely risen since the Tyreek Hill trade. So compared to Cousins, whose value is still the same. Right. So right now, in the eyes of, you know, if you're trying to trade with somebody, Tua is going to be more valuable. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go to Tua. Yeah. All right. Well, before we get off the Dolphins, one thing we didn't really cover a ton is you, you touched on it for a second. Is this the, the backfield in Miami? Is this something that you're just kind of mostly staying away from? Or does I mean, price is certainly going to dictate how much these guys cost at the end of a draft. I mean, I think there's a certain point where it's like, hey, yeah, I'll take I'll take two of these guys at the end of the draft if they're cheap enough. And they but probably like, draft a guy, too. Right. Do you think so? I, 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 I think they. 100% draft a running back. The thing about it that it's going to be like, it's going to be late third, round, fourth, right? fifth round. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's not going to, because obviously we traded our, you know, first and second round picks. So yeah. it's going to be like a James Cook, Pierre Strong kind of guy. Right. I don't, it's not going to be somebody to me that's going to go into the system and automatically be the starter. Right. It's going to be more of a complimentary kind of guy. Yeah. So I still think, I think Chase Edmonds is the RB1, and I think it's going to be like RB, you know, A and B with him and Moster. Yeah. And it's just. Moster will get I, hurt, though, and then Edmonds will be gold. Sure. It, but when Moster's rolling, he's a pain in the butt, man. He, he'll, he'll, he'll just, he'll, when he's rolling, he's gashing you, and it's hard to take him out of the game. So. And he fits the system. And obviously, yeah. he's familiar with that system. Mm-hmm. He's perfect for that system. But yeah, I mean, you want, I, I'm going to take Edmonds, but. Moster, if you get most, you're gonna get Moster cheap. So yeah. I wouldn't mind taking a shot on him. Okay, so w- would like Chase Edmonds, like is it, is it the tenth round? Is it the thirteenth round? If we're talking a oh, dynasty startup, thirteenth. Oh, thirteenth. Nah, I feel like give me a, in a dynasty startup. I'd take my shot on him in like the ninth, tenth okay. round. I feel like that's yeah. fair value for yeah. him. I think that's. I think that's good. I think that's a, that's about where I would start looking for him. Yeah. I was a more excited. Uh, before the most are kind of bring it bring in there but you know i'm, I'm I, I really like the skill set that chase edmonds has and could be the way he could be using that offense and i, I you know i do think he's the rb1 but like i said when most gets rolling man and, and the familiarity with what's going on there coming from 49 right with 49ers mcdaniel bringing in a lot of his guys yeah. plucking them plucking them from the niners yeah you, gotta, you, gotta, you yeah. got a lot of niners guys up in there now Wes welker's over there you should. Well, one thing I noticed too is like the thing about Chase Edmonds that like I didn't realize or like I didn't put together originally is that Mike Daniels had to see Chase Edmonds, yeah, like you know, multiple times a year, right? right. So he's obviously because you know division rivals, right? So he saw something in Chase Edmonds. Like, Look, I want this guy on my team. Yeah. Brought him in. So to me, that says a lot about how you know they're going to use him. Yeah, and in the Shanahan mold plucking a lot of cheap guys right it's like exactly. a cheap stable of good guys they don't pay anyone and that's why like if a guy like pierre strong who comes in and like angelo was harping on pierre strong last week and was like uh just 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 beating the table for him and like talking about how awesome he would be in a wide zone scheme fit and that's like what the niners that's what shanahan does i assume that's what mcdaniel's gonna do and so like and the, and the niners are typical for taking a later guy and then that being like the dude you know so i am a little bit worried about anybody that they bring in because it's just adding to this stable of what they already like to do but mm-hmm. they're all going to be cheap enough you can get you know whichever right. one you like the best get the cheapest one put them on your team Gaskin, Gaskin is still on right that's what i was about to end it with is you know <laughs> i always like asking like when he gets his shots and gets his reps he's usually pretty decent 
You're right. And the only, the only thing about Gaskin, though, what annoyed me a lot is that he's not a great he's not a great runner between the tackles. And he was terrible at the goal line, right? Yeah. Like, the only way he would be able to score is when they did like the wildcat, like a direct snap to yeah. him. And he'd be scoring that way. But he's a great out of the background in terms of receiver. But yeah, he's just going to be part of the committee right now.